Hey there, my name is Julio Sosa and I am going to be presenting my application of module 7, which is from chapter 7, Processing Persuasive Communication. So the theory that I chose to focus on for this application was the inoculation theory, which pretty much says that like a flu shot prepares your body for uh, the flu virus to fight it off, uh, small doses of opposing arguments should produce the mental equivalent of these antibodies or counterarguments, and this should help combat persuasive messages. In fact, counterarguing the opposing messages should lead to strengthening in the initial attitude and increase resistance to persuasion. So, a few weeks ago, I was talking with my little cousin who is 12 and in middle school. And she was telling me about a boy in her class who had been kind of making fun of her, bullying her. She was telling me how he was saying that she was only good at math because she was Asian. And that was his only argument because boys were better at math than girls. And so the only explanation was that she was better because she was Asian. And so when she told me that, I kind of provoked her, you know, asked kind of taking the side of her, her classmate, saying, you know what, yeah, boys are better at math than girls. And so she kind of looked at me, gave me a really confused look, and paused and thought about it for a second. And then she came back and responded saying, no, you know what, that's, that's not true. Like, I don't, one, I'm not Asian. Two, I get the grades that I do because I study and I work very hard for them. And so when she told me that, I was like, yes, you're absolutely right. You know, gender doesn't matter. And in fact, some studies have shown that girls are better at math in, in very early years. And so that she was absolutely right, that her work ethic was, get, was the determining factor in that. And as long as she continued to work hard, she was going to be better at it, you know? And so now that I have gone over the, the experience that I had with my little cousin. I'm going to make a couple inferences, you know. Um, first off, I, I hadn't really realized that at the time I was using the inoculation theory. The small dose of me supporting her classmate's argument, of me supporting that argument against her initial attitude, is what she took and disagreed with it. She was like, no, you know what, that's not... The case I don't I don't I don't agree with that and then she presented her counter argument that she gets the grade that she does because one she works hard and two she um, studies very hard for that class and so now with these inferences I'll go ahead and discuss how they can kind of be transferred over to different situations so now that I am aware of this and I'm aware to identify this sort of skill and practice um, I'd definitely be using it in my own life. And as scholars and practitioners of communication and persuasion, we can definitely take this information and skill and use it to develop our own beliefs and our own arguments and attitudes so that we don't fall susceptible very easily to different types of persuasive messages um, in, in any situation. And in developing, and we can do that in de by developing those also in the people around us with children like my little cousin and with the, our friends and families you know and so in in conclusion this text kind of put a label to what i had been doing even though i hadn't realized it yet until after i read it and i'm sure it had been done to me before and we can use this information to kind of solidify and um hone in on our counter arguments so that we don't fall susceptible uh, you know and as one of the one of the quotes that was presented in our text puts it nicely you know the person who is easiest persuaded is a person whose beliefs have never been seriously challenged and so hopefully with this information we don't fall susceptible to these persuasive messages thank you